hands and give our great God a great praise. Come on, we give him great praise in the sanctuary. For the Lord our God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Come on, let's worship him. Anybody love him more than anything? Anybody honor him more than anything? Anybody come to celebrate his greatness? The Lord our God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Those of you joining at home, those of you in the sanctuary, I encourage you to get on your feet, clap your hands, and worship with us as we celebrate our true and living God because he's great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I'm right. 
to read and recite the hundred division of Psalms. Amen. Amen. I know we all know it, but I'm not going to trust myself. I'm going to read it. Amen. <laughs> the hundred division of Psalms. And let, uh, let them hear us over at Doolins, okay? <laughs> let them hear us over at Doolins. We can smell Doolins food, so let them hear the word. <laughs> Praise God division of Psalms, it reads, let's begin. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. 
Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, who oh, glory to God, and bless his name. For the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Young and old, black and white, foreigners, refugees, all of them. Hallelujah! His truth endureth forever. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I give honor to Ukraine this morning. I'm holding them up, and the word of God is where they are also. So pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. As we, um, can we bow our hearts and bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, and we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for being the God of our salvation. We thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning clothed in our right mind. God, we thank you for health. We thank you for strength right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Today, 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 Lord God, we thank you for watching over us, Lord God, as we slumber and slept last Last night, God, and even if we tossed and turned, Lord God, we thank you because you said in everything that we should give thanks, that this is the will of God for my life in Christ Jesus. Lord God, we bless and we magnify your name, Lord God. The mountains and the hills declare your majesty, God. The heavens and the earth declare your glory, God, and so will we, God. In in the name of Jesus, Lord God, our soul does magnify you for your wondrous works toward men, Lord God. We thank you for your mighty hand, God, that moves in the earth and that moves in the heart of men on today, God, and has been for generation, God, and generations, God, and generations, God. We bless and we magnify your name today, God, for there is no God like you. Lord God, we run boldly to your throne of grace and to your throne of mercy. Lord God, and we ask forgiveness for everything we've done and everything we've said, God. Everything we've thought, God, that was not pleasing in your sight. Lord God, forgive us for everything that we have acted upon. And forgive us, Lord God, for everything that we have acted out, Lord God, that did not bring glory to your your name, God. Forgive us, God, and wash us, God. Purge us, God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God, in the name of Jesus. Hey, God, clean us up from the filthiness of our flesh, God, and of our spirit, Lord God, because as men, we do fall, but God, you love us enough to pick us back up and to put us back in the race, God, and for that, God, we are thankful. Now, God, I ask that you would bless the furtherance of this service, Lord God. Be pleased with our worship. Be pleased with our scriptures. Be pleased with our prayers, God. And most of all, be pleased with the word of God that will go forth in this place, Lord God. Your word, Lord God. Your word, Lord God. Hey, God, it strengthens us and it heals us and it restores us and it revives us Lord God cause your word today God to be pleased
planted in good ground, God. Good ground, Lord God. Planted in our hearts, Lord God. That it might grow, God. And that you would receive good fruit. And that your fruit would remain, God. That there might be a harvest. Shut up for your kingdom God in the name of Jesus and it is in the strong name of Jesus that we pray hallelujah Father God we praise you God we bless you I'll be reading Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 through 9 only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Have not I command thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Now come on and give God a hand praise this morning. I mean, if you can feel the presence of God, I just want to hear a shout out. God wants to hear from you this morning. He wants to hear from your praise this morning. Somebody say yes.
mighty to you? Is he mighty to you? Is he awesome to you? Is he faithful to you? Come on, clap your hands, everybody, come on. more powerful 
than a people who know something about the name declaring the name of Jesus. Can you just lift your hands in the sanctuary and as loud as you can let out a holler, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, I'm out. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. There is something about the name. Come on, help me, church. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance. Sanctuary, come help me call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms shall. your hand with confidence but there's something <laughs> I wish I had some help in here but there's something come on in the house lift it up God there's something over your trials help me say but there's something oh. Clap your hands and give him glory. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Ah, he's a wonder and we bless him. Hallelujah. He's a wonder and we celebrate him. Ah, for his name is great. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Ah, he is. Oh, <laughs> And he says his holy name. <laughs> That's the reason. somebody Jesus is the sweetest thing I know <laughs> and he's just the same <laughs> as his holy name that's the reason why I love him so because and we bless him. Hallelujah. His name is great. Hallelujah. His name is wonderful. His name is mighty. There is no sweeter name than the name of Jesus. Uh, look at somebody tell me there's no sweeter name than the name of Jesus. And nothing more powerful on earth than when people who know about that name lift up that name. Ah, uh, I could just smell the perfume of heaven spiritually. Hallelujah. When there's a prophetic utterance that goes up uh, before him with the lifting of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a drawing that happens when Jesus is lifted. Ah, there's a power that happens when Jesus is exalted. And we bless his wonderful name today. He is the light of our soul. He is the joy of my salvation. Somebody say, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. He's the joy of my salvation. Yes, he is. <laughs> ah, what I love about the name of Jesus is that when we try to find words to articulate, try to find adjectives to describe him, try to find adequate phrasing, amen, about, amen, his wonder, his name says it all. Yes. Just look at somebody and tell them his name says it all. His name says it all. Uh, I need somebody that knows somebody. Look at somebody tell them his name says it all. Uh, his name says it all. When we cry out Jesus, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. It encompasses everything that he possesses. Hallelujah. But that name is above every name. It's in that name of Jesus. Amen. That we get strength even today. We get, amen, breakthrough even today. We honor him and we celebrate him. Amen. The mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to receive our hospitality team as they come even now. Amen. To greet our guests and visitors. Let's greet them. Amen. As they come in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Where two or three are gathered there. There he is in the midst. Amen. I'm coming to you on behalf of the hospitality committee. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus. On behalf of our pastor, Kyron Shorter, and our beautiful first lady, Sister Tara Shorter, in her absence. We have a few visitors this morning. Amen. We have um, repeat visitors. Um, Sister Haley Kenner and Sister Esther Kenner. They found us online, Pastor, and today they brought their friend, Michelle Seats, all the way from Indiana this weekend as they celebrated her birthday, but we say happy birthday. Thank you for coming this weekend, and thank you both for bringing your visitor with you. We also have another visitor hailing all the way from Houston, Texas this morning, Evangelist Joyce Johnson. We greet you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And we have another visitor that is right here in the neck of the woods, Pastor. Her name is Sister Lotita Lucita Bell, and she brought her son. So we greet you in Jesus' name. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Amen? And we greet you online, people. We thank God for you to be in our service this morning, and we greet you as well. Thank you. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise one more time for all of our guests and visitors. Come on, y'all. Y'all know how we do. Let's say amen. God bless you. Welcome, 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 welcome. Amen. Welcome. We're so glad that you are with us in the sanctuary. We're so glad that you're with us online virtually. We hope that you are experiencing the wonderful power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I mean, it's feeling really good in the sanctuary. I hope that wherever you may be enjoying this broadcast, you feel the Lord moving as well. If you haven't done so already, get that phone out. Hit the share button. Let's share this broadcast, y'all. Let's uh, let people know that Bethesda, I'm doing it right now myself, <laughs> that Bethesda is live, amen, that the power of God is going forth even now, amen. We want, amen, those, amen, in virtual land to experience what we're experiencing, and again, we greet every one of you, amen. It's so great, amen, to be in the sanctuary, it's so great to be amongst the saints, amen. It's so great, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm glad to be in church, amen. <laughs> I'm excited about, amen, being in church, amen. Who would have thought? all of these, amen, months later, amen, that we would have the opportunity to come in back into the sanctuary and it would be a little different this time around. But amen, I thank God that we have a chance to be here, amen. We have a chance to, amen, usher up praise into our Lord and Savior. We have a chance, amen, to give God all the praise and glory that's due his name. So again, we greet you all. We thank you all for being with us. You could have chosen to be anywhere in the world, literally, amen. But the fact that you chose to be here in the sanctuary with us here at Bethesda Church, we love you. We thank God for you in Jesus' name, amen. Man, let's worship the Lord in our giving this morning, amen. Amen, amen going to ask you to prepare your hearts, amen, as we receive our tithes and offerings, amen, on this morning, amen, as we give unto God the first fruits of our increase, as he's blessed us and favored us in the midst of all that's going on, we have faith in God, we have faith in God, amen, just look at somebody and tell them, have faith in God, have faith in God, have as much faith in God as you have, amen, in spectrum, amen, as much Come on now, somebody talk to me. <laughs> you have as much, much faith in God as you have in, in San Diego's SDG and E, but up here, I don't know what it is. It's LA uh, Power and Water <laughs> Department. Amen. WD, all right. <laughs> DW, all right. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> have enough faith in God. And what, I'm, what do you mean by that? You have faith, amen, that if you don't render unto the water man, amen, <laughs> you're going to be down, amen, at the community center trying to shower up. Amen. Amen. You have enough faith to believe that if you don't pay your spectrum bill, <laughs> you're going back to reading newspapers and Ebony and Jet magazines. Amen. <laughs> amen. So, amen. What I mean by that is let's have faith in God. Amen. I don't want to be cursed. I don't want to be cursed. And I hear the Lord saying there were some people who before gas got six price, it got six dollars, there was already a spirit of a curse. 
Don't change up now. Oh, now I got to think about it. You were cursed before things went up. But there are some of us who in the midst of it, it don't even phase us. It's painful, but we trust and believe that God is going to make a way of escape. Amen. We have confidence in God. Look at somebody tell them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. Just, just, he's just as real. Amen. As your shut off notice. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> Woo, it got <laughs> real quiet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God is real. Amen. He's real. Amen. And what I mean by that is let's prioritize God in the midst of what's going on. Amen. God says, bring unto me and I'll make sure that in seasons of lack, I'll make sure uh, that in seasons uh, of of difficulty and seasons of tight places, there will be meat in my house and provision in my house. Amen. The saints, amen, here at Bethesda, thanks be to God, amen, that in the midst of all that's going on with food inflation, God blessed us with a, with, with a food pantry. And you can come in, if you want a whole chicken today, you can leave church with a whole chicken. And rice and vegetables and mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese and cornbread dressing. I mean, the, the God has made provision for the saints in the midst of it. You could leave church today with $100 worth of groceries for free. God said, in the midst of all that's going on, I'm going to sustain my people. Now, many of us, you know, I'm too good for that. I don't, you know, not, not this brother. <laughs> Every now and then I'll go grab, you know, some, some Campbell, that chunky soup, <laughs> you know, and have lunch for the week, take some of that chicken breast and have chicken salad. Amen. Come on. Come on now. Come on. He says, it's, it's, he's taking care of us. He's taking care of us. And, and, and I know, I'll tell you, money is spiritual. Money is very spiritual. Because the minute you get some money, God is blessing. But the minute you broke, the devil is busy. Come on now. I know you pulled up on pump number four. It's about the devil is a liar. <laughs> it drove right down the block to see if it was four cents cheaper. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. It's true. But at the end of the day, God says, the only thing in between me and windows is your faith. The only thing standing between me and doors is your faith. He says, have enough confidence in me as you do everything else. Stay connected to my word. Just like you pay your bill to keep your phone on, pay your tithes to stay connected. just wave at me tithers wave at me so I just know all right amen so amen I I just I believe in it I believe in it the only reason why I'm able amen to have what I have is because I committed at a young age I've been there before let's just walk through the door I've been there before on the couch jobless asking God to make a way and remembering that when he had when I had to give I squandered what I have I didn't make good financial moves I didn't save nothing, and I didn't tithe consistently. And I remember sitting on that couch telling God, if you bless me again, you favor me again, I will prioritize it. And I know, like many of y'all, we've had some good days and hills to climb. But I thank God he placed it in my spirit to prioritize. Just like I prioritize putting stuff away for the 401k, it's, it's, it's embedded in me. And, and, and I thank God that he reminds me every now and then the reason you have success, the reason you could buy a home at age 30 with, with all of your credit history, the, the, the reason why you're able to, to do the things that I've blessed you to do it is because you made a promise unto me. These are just windows. These are just doors. But just wait till I put my whole weight. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. All of heaven belongs to me. We shout and dance over windows, but he says, wait till my whole weight gets on my promise. Amen. And so I want to encourage you, wherever you may be, even in this season of lack, trust God, stay connected to God. Whatever you have, raise it up. We have the electronic methods of giving, Zale, Cash App, PayPal, amen. Uh, uh, If you've got credit card machine, amen, there's every way. But whatever you have, raise it up. Raise that device up. Take the crook out of it because I believe God. Amen. I believe. It belongs to him. It ain't mine anyway. (laughs) It belongs to him. Even if you don't have to give, I want you to raise your hand. Why do I want you to raise your hand? Because I want you to make covenant, amen, that even in seasons of lack, God will perform. Amen. Amen. God's faithful to his word. Lift that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. 
We thank you, O oh God, for, amen, what you've blessed us with. We thank you, O oh God, for how you pour into us. We thank you, O oh God, how you take care of us, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the faith that we have in you and in your plan and in your will. And we render back unto you, O oh God, the seed of what you've blessed us with. Just a small portion of what you've blessed us will we give back unto you. And we ask in the name of Jesus, our hand is lifted, O oh God, that, O oh God, our faith would meet your works, O oh God. That our faith, O oh God, would meet your hand, your weight of glory, O oh God. And that this small seed will open up doors for generational wealth, O oh God. Will open up doors, O oh God, to change my life forever, O oh God. Not the cliche, O oh God, but trusting and believing your word and believing your faithfulness of every promise you've made. We bless you and we thank you, O oh God, today. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. We're going to turn you into the hands, amen, of our officials. And we're going to ask everyone to stand in the sanctuary as you come around to give. I'm going to ask these two sections if you would face each other here. Amen. And then come back to the center aisle. And then this, amen, these two sections if you would stand here and face each other. Amen. And come back to the center aisle in Jesus' name. The ushers will serve you in Jesus' name.
Every now and then God will bring a word through the song to tell you he's working it out. Just look at somebody and tell them he's working it out. Oh, Shama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trials, tribulations, obstacles. But in the midst of it, I'm lifting my hand, believing he's working it out. He's working it out. else agrees with me. I'll sit in here myself and go to dancing myself. He's working. Some of you got 
got challenges, some of you got drama, some of you got bills, some of you got issues, aches and pains. You ought to stand on your feet and remind the devil he's working. He's working. He's working. He's working. virtual high fives and this is why he's working it out turn around and tell somebody he's working it out make eye contact with somebody and prophesy he's working it out uh, he's working it out he's working it out he's working it out uh, I said lean in and tell somebody he's working God is working. I wish I would sit up in here and be quiet knowing God is working. I wish I would sit up in here and act like I wasn't going to praise him knowing God is sitting on the throne arranging and strategizing and working things out on my behalf. I wish I would sit up in here and not raise my hand and go to dancing. I wish I would wait till the battle is over to lift my voice. Somebody shout he's working it out. it out. He's working it out. <laughs> uh, uh. I refuse to be discouraged knowing God is as big as he is. I refuse to be bound knowing God is as strong as he is. I refuse not to lift my hand knowing that God is as wise as he is. And knowing that he's working all things together <laughs> for the good, for the good, for the good. Oh, hallelujah. Sit down if you can. Hallelujah. He's a wonder and we bless him. Can we give God a hand praise for the music ministry this morning? <laughs> Afternoon, noon. Help me celebrate God for my dear, amen, I call her auntie, amen, from San Diego, Pastor Beverly Taylor, y'all, Prophetess Taylor. Come on, let's give God a hand praise for her. We used to sneak into North Park Apostolic Church growing up back in the day on 54, because that's where the real, you know, that's where the old glory was. <laughs> and we used to, you know, they used to stop having Sunday night church in San Diego, just, you know how it is, you know. And we would sneak in there on Sunday night because we know we can get a good dance, a good word. And Pastor Bell would be up wrecking the house. <laughs> Amen. Just climbing the rafters and, you know, preaching and singing and exhorting. And I thank God that she came up to be with us today. God bless you, Pastor Taylor. Thank you for loving on me. That's my mom's home girl. <laughs> they have the same name, Beverly. So, you know, they <laughs> back in the day working together and stuff. And so I thank God for her coming up to see about us. And thank God for that prophetic utterance. Amen. Thank God for, amen, just friends we have in the body of Christ, amen, to come and share their gift. Thank God for these musicians, amen, amen, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. We thank God for the Levites today. We have some quick announcements for you. Just take a pen and paper down real quickly. I want to share these with you. I want to remind you that we do have prayer, amen, Monday through Friday, amen, on our corporate conference call line. I want you to join us for prayer, amen, the noonday hour. God meets us in a very profound and prophetic way. Amen. On our conference call line, amen, from noon, uh, from noon to 1230, just a half hour. We take that time to receive instruction and direction and sometimes updates on 
what's happening in our city and county, as well as uh, all of our announcements. But more importantly, we get a word of encouragement and we pray and ask God for direction and clarity in our marching orders, amen, and our assignments and focuses, amen, as believers. And it's been a powerful thing, y'all. I think this year, amen, to this week kind of marks two years. Amen. That we have had prayer Monday through Friday, and it's been a blessing. Amen. Can we celebrate and appreciate God for prayer? I'm telling y'all, amen, the pandemic pushed us further. Amen. Amen. A put pandemic, amen, didn't take us from God. It drew us closer to God. I would hope that at the end of this two-year experience, your testimony would be that my, my relationship with God grew. I don't believe that a pandemic could regress the saints. It happened in scripture, amen. We see in scripture sometimes people being away from the presence of God, what it does to them. But I know there's a remnant that used the drama and the trauma and the ups and downs, everything going around, amen, and going on, amen, to yield closer to God. And we celebrate the power and the covenant that we have in prayer because God meets us in prayer and above all, God has answered prayer, amen. And I thank God that we don't just pray, we pray believing, amen. And, and, and we have praise reports of the things that God is doing, amen, in the lives of his people. So don't sleep on prayer. Look at somebody tell them, don't sleep on prayer. <laughs> Don't sleep on prayer, amen. What was he, what did uh, Jesus tell his disciples? You couldn't what tarry with me <laughs> an hour <laughs> in prayer. Don't sleep on prayer, amen. Talk, talk to God. If you aren't talking to God, who are you talking to? If you have no relationship with God, who do you have relationship with? And what is that vice? What is that spirit that's either promoting your spiritual growth or pulling you away? Some of us are too connected. We're too, we're, we're too, we, we just up on everything that's going on in this world, and this world, amen, is coming to an end. This is the time we ought to draw nearer to God. You should talk more to God than you talk to your homegirl. Ooh, I know it's kind of... <laughs> Because you go to your homegirl for, you go to your homeboy, you go to your, you know, your, your mom for advice. And, but you should have, you, you should just as much energy you put and in, in solace you have in someone physically here on earth building you up and pouring into you. I'm not talking about somebody that's building you from a spiritual perspective. But we should have just that much time and relationship and put that much more energy into our relationship with God. For every text message you send, you should read a scripture. And if we did that, maybe we wouldn't be texting as much. <laughs> uh, or what if I said for every scroll a scripture? <laughs> Some of us <laughs> would be an all night reading, okay? <laughs> but let's challenge ourselves. Look at somebody tell them, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Challenge your, challenge your own walk with God. Amen. And we're close to the end. And if you haven't heard it all week, if you haven't seen what's going on in our world, there's a preacher here telling you Jesus is coming soon. And that shouldn't scare you. That should excite you. That should excite you. Jesus is coming soon. What we've been waiting for, y'all. <laughs> I wonder if we really believe what we believe. I mean, the, the catching away of the saints. God coming back to get his bride. God coming back for the faithful who endured hardship and affliction. I'm telling y'all, that's how I know he's working it out. Because <laughs> he's not going to leave me in tribulation. He's not going to leave me, amen, and struggle without his hand of security coming down to see about me. Praise God. Can we celebrate God for just being God? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Let's not go backwards. Amen. Even as the doors open back up and they let us take some of the mask off and stuff like that, and as we now get to enjoy some of the liberties and things back, let's be vigilant. But let's also keep our ear inclined to our relationship with God. Guard your relationship. Guard your walk with God. When you guard your walk with God, you don't have to worry about, am I, am I taking in too much cussing? Am I watching things that are too provocative? If, if that's even, I'm saying that right or not. Um, you know, Guard your relationship with God. Guard it. Guard it. I don't want my spirit contaminated. <laughs> it is nothing personal, but when you come in the coffee break room with your drama, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you call me with nonsense and foolishness and nothing to build my, my spirit, man, I've got to guard 
I got to guard my relationship with God. I don't want anything to seep in and contaminate me and, and have my thinking off. And praise God. Amen. <laughs> amen. Prayer. Meet us in prayer. I started to say meet us in prayer daily. All right. <laughs> amen. Also, amen. Uh, our council is this upcoming week. Our virtual council is this week. For those that don't know, amen. Our church is part of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World and also part of our local diocese, which is the Central California District Council. And we have a session of period called Council. And I take the time because everybody doesn't know. So I want to take the time to encourage you to know what the council is. We're part of a organization that we submit to for leadership and, and instruction and encouragement and reproval. Amen. And uh, we thank God for our leader in the person of Bishop Robert T. Douglas Sr. and our chairman, Bishop Portis. And we're having our council session. This is kind of like, amen, think about it. You know, <laughs> I used to think about the council. I used to think about, you know, like the Indians and, you know, back in the day, Native Americans, they would go, amen, and meet as a council, all right, <laughs> amongst the leaders and elders. And that's what this kind of is. This is a chance for us to give our sister churches and, amen, get instruction and download and impartation and to be strengthened as leaders, but also as lay members to hear the hear from our leaders concerning what's going on amen in our uh in our in our uh, spiritual walk but also what's going on in our country and so we're going to be meeting virtually you know we're not going to be in person so i encourage you to go out to amen the central california district council's facebook page and youtube pages amen a ccdc it's going to be great preaching great instruction amen great dialogue and that's going to be happening this week it starts thursday through amen saturday which is the 17th through the 19th and so i encourage you many of our many of our leaders here that are part of our church work in the council so let's support them as they can contribute to uh, the CCDC's events as well. Amen? So that's this upcoming week, all right? The 17th through the 19th, and we'll try our best to share on our platforms as best we can, but if we don't, go out again out to the Central California District Council Facebook page to receive that information. I want to remind everybody that our women, ladies, what's up ladies? Amen? Yo, women's ministry, amen? Amen. Can we celebrate God for our first lady, Lady Shorter, amen, in her absence? She sent me a message and Amen. The baby is, uh, pray for Christopher. He's not feeling as well. So, I mean, pray. I know it's going to be, I'm getting ready. I'm actually not going to be long today because I got to get to the airport. I'm, amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if y'all don't get a long message today, don't hold it against me, man. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, pray because I'm saying to myself, wow, I'm getting ready to leave town. I'm leaving from L.A. to go somewhere and the baby's cutting up and not feeling well. So can we pray for uh, Lady Shorter and pray for Christopher and pray for the baby? She's going to be with them for a few days. And y'all already know when y'all got toddlers, <laughs> amen, the drama associated with it. But she desired to be here, but she sent the message to us all. Uh, tell everybody I love them and I'm thinking about them, amen. But women's ministry, March the 26th, Saturday, they're having the women's brunch, all right? So all women are invited. Amen. I believe they're going to have the table set up for signups and stuff for that. But uh, as we get our fellowship back, as we we get, amen, back to the swing of things, amen, the women are getting together on Saturday the 26th, amen, for a time of just fellowship, food, what, what y'all ladies do, amen, <laughs> and so that's March the 26th, and uh, we're excited about it already, a bunch of people have already signed up for it, and it's going to be a great experience, amen, and uh, again, you can sign up in the fellowship hall um, for that event, amen, our food bank is on the 26th as well, so if you know anyone, so I need, I need some men, amen, I, I, I promise Lady Geneva, Amen. That we, the men, would take care of the food bank that day so the women can enjoy themselves. Is that all right? Is that all right, brothers? All right? <laughs> amen. So we need some help. We need some, 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 some extra hands. And amen. We're going to endeavor to take some of the load off of the women that day on March the 26th. All right? And then I want to remind you, we're virtual. We're in person next Sunday the 20th. We're virtual on the 27th. And uh, April the 3rd, which is the first Amen. Uh, Sunday in April is Senior Sunday. Amen. Amen. All right, Senior Saints. Amen. And so we're going to have a great day of fellowship. I uh, mean, we have a guest, special guest speaker. Dr. Ruth Aaron will be with us. Dr. Ruth Aaron Richardson will be with us. Amen. Sunday, the seniors choir is going to be singing. Amen. We got a few nice things in store as we celebrate God for our season saints. Can we give out a hand of praise for our season saints? Amen. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to God beating us in a special way. So those are all of our announcements. Again, if you desire any more information, we're going to be posting things on our social media pages. Check us out on Instagram. Amen. We are, I mean, underscore Bethesda. You'll see us on there. Amen. As well as our Facebook page and our YouTube pages. We try to keep all the information up there. Or our website, www.wearebethesda.org. Amen. Let's get to the word of the Lord. Amen. Whatever you do, 
for me. <laughs> However things turn out to be. We're in the book of Luke, chapter number 15. As long as you're in control, I know things will work out for me. <laughs> Whatever you you do for me. Stop the madness. Amen. We're continuing in our series. Stop the madness. We're in the book of Luke, chapter number 15. Hold it on. Work together. Work together. For the good. church and have to have your own church service. <laughs> you ever been there before when, <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I know we're not touching like we're supposed to, but can you just squeeze somebody and just tell them he's working it out. Come on, just squeeze somebody. Tell them he's working it out. He's working it out. All things. All things. Oh, my. 
I haven't forgotten about them. disperse healing even now disperse joy even now shift even now oh God give clarity and direction oh God in the name of Jesus let this word come forth power victory and strength your people be blessed in Jesus name amen and amen Luke 15 verse 25 through 32. Now his elder son was in the field and as he came and drew nigh into the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, thy brother is come thy father have killed the fatted calf because he have received him safe and sound and he was angry and would not go in y'all see the madness therefore came his father out and entreated him and he answering said to his father lo these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, but as soon as this thy son is, was come, which have uh, devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf and he said unto his son son thou art ever with me and all that I have is thine it was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found Father, speak concerning our madness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. For just a few moments, I want to minister from this subject, a surprise party. A surprise party. Let's look at somebody and tell them we're both still here. Stop the madness. This month, March Madness, is a month, amen, that many of us sports connoisseurs, we relish at the havoc. The upsets, the victories, the triumphs, the Cinderella stories. You're going to hear that quite a bit if you watch sports during the month of March Madness. There's some people I'm learning, they don't necessarily watch sports, but they fill out a bracket. <laughs> and they... Pick teams to compete to win the prize, and you'll begin to realize that the month of March for some is a natural March madness because of what we see in the sports arena, but also it's a maddening condition or place or state in the chronos or chronological order of the year. 
because usually it's in the month of March where we start reevaluating the promises and the resolutions and the things that we said we were going to do in January. This is the check-in point. This is usually when we, amen, uh, have to reevaluate whether or not we're still eating healthy, if we're still on the path to accomplishing the goals and things that we started out with the year. And so just very you know, technically or, or very psychologically, the month of March can be a month of depression or a month of madness, a month of, 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 of understanding or challenge as it relates to just the things that we naturally go through versus the goals and objectives that we set. And I just thought about this concept of, 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 of madness that we sometimes experience in the kingdom. Church, in many cases, much like many institutions or organizations, are not without flaws. But I struggle sometimes with why it is that we don't have a genuine sense of, of joy as it relates to some of the things that should be trivial. Why do we continue to have stumbling blocks in areas that hinder the church's ability to function and thrive and grow as we're supposed to grow? And why is it that we, amen, sometimes are stunted in our growth as it relates to maturity and won't allow us to embrace what God desires to do? And why sometimes the madness in cases and, and, and in seasons can be cycles that or detours or detractions or dead ends to the promise. And so very strategically, this month I wanted to deal with the madness wanted to deal with some of the institutions, some of the opinions and thought processes and some of the things that, amen, challenge us as believers that never let us get to glory, that never let us get to the fulfillment, amen, or the appreciation of every prophetic utterance or promise that God has for us. And so this month, amen, I know some may liken it into spiritual spanking. It's not necessarily spiritual spanking. In some cases, I believe it's uh, an opportunity for us to be challenged, an opportunity for us, amen, to have God pull back the things that we don't address, to pull back the things that we don't talk about. Uh, I'm working on a message entitled, We Don't Talk About Bruno. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody seen uh, <laughs> Canto? Amen. Uh, all, all the parents, okay. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, <laughs> that song is like on repeat in my house. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. But it was very interesting, amen, uh, uh, um, movie that had all kind of just different and different uh, just I think it's not necessary it's a Disney movie you know so you to take what you want to take from it but there are certain scenes I was like wow that's that's you can tell like that's interesting spiritual concept you know uh, we fall out with family members and we keep secrets we suppress we we promote certain gifts <laughs> suppress other gifts the madness that was associated with the house and the fracturing as a result of it I thought, wow, that's interesting. We don't talk about certain things in church. We, we just dance over it. We just shout over it. And, and as a result of it, we are a, uh, in some cases, uh, dysfunctional spiritual being that fails to sometimes unlock the things that God wants us to see. Because, again, we guard ourselves to the things that we don't believe God ever wants us to address in our lives. So this month, I want to go after it. The book of Luke is where we find our house, house our, our, our text house today. I have probably mm -hmm. preached from this text on a number of occasions in my young ministerial career. It's one that I did a, an actual devotion on as it relates to the book of Luke, especially these subsequent chapters that lead to chapter number 15 and, and you know, the thoughts of things that are lost and found and, and how Luke, our physician, uh, or Luke, our writer, is actually an individual who I think gives us great perspective on the things necessary for us, amen, to achieve, amen, great gain despite losing. And so I remember ministering quite a few messages from uh, a few of these chapters here quite vividly because it was just something that God was giving me perspective on. And I thought about this as it relates to this whole March Madness. There's going to be some winners and losers. And I'm saying to myself, why can't everybody win? You would think everybody can win. And certainly everybody can. And so it certainly took me 
to this particular text, and God says, I want you to unlock this. Just give me a few moments again. I've got a flight to catch, so I can't stay here long. But the book of Luke is probably one of the most descriptive of the synoptic gospels as it relates to the, the gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, the synoptic gospels that deal with the things that Jesus did, what Jesus said, how Jesus operated, how Jesus functioned, amen, here on earth. Again, John is considered part of the gospels, but not necessarily a synoptic gospel because John deals with more of the identity of Jesus, Jesus being 100% God, 100% man. But in Luke, Luke deals with some very challenging subjects. In particular, you have to understand that the Gospels are the first in, in the order of the New Testament, in many cases, come after some of the epistles that are written. They're companion pieces that are moments of reflection that the writer sometimes will take firsthand testimonies and go back and revisit the workings of Jesus, that there would be a, a, a note, that there would be an instruction, that there would be something left for other generations to realize this is the thing that Jesus did when he was here. Now, Luke, Luke is a companion of, of, of Peter, uh, a companion of Paul. Um, he's a companion of the disciples in their journeys and the establishment of the New Testament church. His writing is a writing, amen, that gives us perspective, but it's secondhand information. Uh, he is a physician by nature, a physician by profession. And what that means is he's very surgical. That means his writing is very exact. Uh, he probably has one of the most literally, uh, uh, literal, amen, uh, uh, forms of the gospel that probably give you the great insight from a literary perspective. Uh, he deals with the Holy Ghost. I love how Luke deals with the Holy Ghost. He's the one who gives us the book of Acts. So quite naturally, after the affairs of Acts and probably sitting around and shooting the breeze with Peter and Paul and those, amen, particularly with Peter, about what happened, amen, in the life of Jesus and the disciples and hearing the secondhand stories, it's, it's I believe, interesting that you hear the incorporation of the Holy Ghost, amen, in the Synoptic Gospels. He introduces, amen, and makes mention that the things that Jesus did in his ministry is done, amen, by the gift of the Holy Spirit. He, without apology, introduces us repeatedly to the work of the Holy Ghost, even before the outpouring of the Holy Ghost that we know in the book, amen, of Acts and on the day of Pentecost. He deals with Jerusalem and the temple as important themes. He's very strategic and surgical in letting you know about, amen, the geography of Jesus, amen. He tells us, amen, of the scenes of people in worship at the temple, how Jesus laments concerning the unfaithfulness of certain portions of the communities that he operates in. Amen. Luke tells us repeatedly, Jesus is Lord. Amen. On, amen, repeated in motifs throughout his writing, Jesus is Lord. You can hear it almost from his narrative, amen, a, a tone in scripture that he wants you to know, amen, without apology, Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, amen. The Messiah is the Hebrew term. The Greek word is Christ, amen, which means the anointed one. He goes out of his way to tell you the identity of Jesus is permanent and how he handles what he is handling amongst the people because he is one who is anointed by God, that he is Savior. Amen. Although terms like Savior are used in Matthew and Mark, it's important that when Luke speaks of Jesus being our Savior, it is so that we have an understanding, amen, of the Gentile role in salvation. Luke, unlike the other writers, is a Gentile. He's born out of covenant. He's born out of relationship. And so his goal is to share with you and I God's plan, amen, to include the Gentile in salvation. It's important that you don't mix it up because there are some people who would feel as if Luke comes in to replace Judaism. That's not his goal. His goal is not to amen to throw shade on the Jews. His goal is not to amen deduce Judaism. His goal is not to deduce amen the Jews he's working with but his goal is to let you know that Christ did not just come amen uh, yes in the form of a king amen to amen redeem the Jews or to bring atonement to the Jews. He came to be Savior of the world for all of us. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. 
He tells us Jesus is God. Amen. Because of the natural things that he does, Luke is descriptive in letting you know Jesus is God. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not an angel. <laughs> ah, oh, ah, nah, nah. <laughs> he is God. Amen. He is the Son of Man. Amen. This expression, Son of Man, is used frequently, amen, throughout Luke, amen, to let you know of the characteristics of Jesus. In Luke, Jesus employs this title, amen. Amen. To give you context and clarity of his role, but most importantly, so that we are drawn to the suffering of Jesus. He is the son of man because he has to suffer. Mm. He's not exempt, amen, from his human experience. So in the context of son of man, it's to bring, amen, vindication to his overall glory, amen, that's housed in him, amen. But the son of man means that I am not without challenge. I'm not without torment. I'm not without oppression. I'm not without even rejection. These are things that we all experience here in the flesh. How do I know you're human? Because you don't like rejection. How do I like, uh, you don't like nobody talking about you. Come on now. Too many people tell you your breath stink, amen. Too many people agree with you, amen. You got an odor to you, you get offended. You start feeling some kind of, somebody step on your food. Yeah, that's son of man. I am man, all right? I have to deal with rejection. I have to deal with the appetite of being housed, amen, in flesh. My God. Huh? But if there is one thing that I believe, amen, that we, amen, certainly can take from, amen, the book of Luke is that the book of Luke is written, amen, so that Jesus can confront the culture, amen, that many of us don't like to deal with, and that is the outsider. Nobody likes to be the outsider. <laughs> Nobody likes to be outside of the joke. Right? You know, we're standing around, amen, and people are laughing. What you laughing about? And you just don't get what's so funny. You got people falling over chairs and laughing. Nobody likes to be the outsider. And because nobody likes to be the outsider, amen, Luke comes to tell you that Jesus is here, amen, for the afflicted of disease. He's here for the alien. He's here for the refugee. He's here for the children and for the women and for the poor and for the slave and for the widows and for the elderly, amen, and for the shepherd and for the tax collector, for the Samaritan, and very much so the Gentile, the heathen. God is here. He is the God, amen, that works on the inside, but he is a God that's conscious of the outside. Scripture tells us that Luke, amen, situates, amen, himself, amen, amen, his writings to situate Jesus as a, a, a promise keeper and, and most importantly to shed light on God's fidelity and his promise to Israel. Amen. He goes out of his way to let you know, amen, that Jesus is a promise keeper. And so not only does he die, but he is only he is the only one of the writers, amen, that will tell you about Jesus' ascension. His resurrection and Jesus ascending, Jesus going back to glory. My God, hallelujah. And above all, what I appreciate, again, about, amen, Luke's writing is that this salvation that he teaches us, amen, lets us know that what God is doing is in the presence of everyone. What God is doing is not just, although, amen, uh, the happenings are happening here in Rome, the happenings are happening in Ju uh, Jerusalem, the happenings are happening here, amen, in these strategic parts of the text, he's letting us know that God's plan, amen, is to, amen, allow the story to expand beyond where we are, all right? And that's important. Because there are some people, amen, who localize, amen, and ascribe the workings of Jesus just to a setting. And because of that, amen, you handcuff the gospel, you handcuff the work of Jesus to be limited to a region. No, Luke is telling you, no, this gospel is to go beyond this capacity. It's supposed to go beyond, amen, this community. Luke lets you know, amen, that the gospel, amen, is a gospel of vibrancy, amen, that went from home to home, from heart amen, to breast, amen, it went, amen, from upper room, amen, and it poured out, amen, and that's why it's so critical, amen, that he is the writer, amen, of the book of Acts, because it is he that lets you know that as a Gentile, the gospel is for everybody, the gospel is ever expanding, my God, there are, amen, no insider secrets only to this gospel, the gospel, oh Shabbat, is poured out, the spirit is poured
poured out. Amen. Come here, Joel. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He takes the time to tell you this is what Peter declares, uh, that this gospel is for everyone. This is that which was spoken. These men are not drunk as ye suppose. Amen. Luke tells you without apology, uh, I'm just as qualified as the next one to receive the promise of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have time. Amen. I see. I can see myself doing. Amen. Uh, uh, the running man. Amen. <laughs> to get on. <laughs> uh, so let me move forward. Amen. What I find interesting as we marvel here now to the book of Luke chapter number 15 is all of this book of Luke 15 is about losses. It's about losses. You have a parable. Jesus loves to speak in parables. Jesus, amen, is descriptive in his teachings to those, amen, because he understands, amen, that sometimes we just don't get it. All right. And so he takes the time to break down these stories. Amen. So that you can signify and have understanding. Amen. Of, of what happens in the heavenlies. But here on earth, these are parables. These are amen stories. Amen. That give you spiritual enlightenment that are broken down. I wouldn't say dumbed down, but they're broken down for our understanding. And so Jesus is teaching here. Amen. In Luke chapter number 15. Amen. Which I believe is also a carryover. Amen. About God. God's love for the lost. It actually starts in Luke chapter number nine. Amen. Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. All of this, amen, from chapter number nine to chapter number 19 is Jesus' journey into Jerusalem as he gets ready, amen, to start the work, to start the work of being a sacrifice for all men. But he takes the time in his preaching and teaching to his disciples, amen, and in the midst of performing miracles and arguing with religious leaders, and amen, as he's escalating all these things that will eventually lead to his arrest, amen, his crucifixion, and then his ascension, he takes the time to tell us about some things that are happening to compare and contrast the urgency and God's love for things that are lost. God's love and intentionality, amen, to include everybody, amen. Luke repeatedly will remind the reader over and over again, amen, that, Luke, that, that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. All of the time that he breaks up to tell the story about, amen, uh, 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 these stories of, of things that are lost every now and then Luke, amen, will remind you, but he's on his way to Jerusalem. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, something happened here, but he's on his way to Jerusalem. He breaks up his story over and over again to tell you that Jesus is on a journey, but his journey is incomplete unless those, amen, that are assigned to him can go with him to fulfill the mission of the cross. I'm so glad that Jesus did not get so much in a hurry uh, that he doesn't understand the significance of you and I being part of the plan. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so glad that on his march, amen, to Golgotha, on his march, amen, to Calvary's cross, amen, that he doesn't just render us a lost cause. <laughs> ah, that he takes the time repeatedly to say, you are part of my plan. You are part of my assignment. You are part of my agenda. Ah, hallelujah. So throughout these 10 chapters, we read about the good Samaritan. We read about the rich fool. We read about the great banquet. Ah, yes, go out to the hedges and highways. Ha. Ah, yes, since the people don't want to eat at my dinner, go out to the hedges and highways and tell whosoever will to come and eat at my table. Ha. Ah, yes, we read about the rich man and Lazarus. We read about, amen, the persistent widow. We read about, amen, the Pharisees and the tax collectors. Ha. Ah, we have memorable moments, the, the healing of the, the leopards as Jesus is on his way ha. to Jerusalem. His journey includes healing. I come to tell some of you, if you would take this journey with Jesus, it doesn't even matter if you have something uncurable like leprosy. If you will follow Jesus in his journey, you will see that there is healing for you on this journey. Ah, oh my God. I uh, can't preach it all today. Ah, uh, yes, but in chapter number 15, he deals with lost sheep. Ah, yes, he takes the time to tell you, amen, that there's a shepherd, amen, who has a hundred sheep. Ah, the sheep, ah, yes, are out grazing, and one of the sheep go to wandering. Ah, yes, Luke takes the time to tell you that Jesus does or that, that this shepherd does something interesting. As Jesus is telling us this parable, he says that this shepherd leaves the 99 grazing. Ah, 
He leaves the 99 sheep to go after the one. Now, I'm saying to myself, ah, yes, if I got 99 problems, ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, somebody acting a fool ain't one, you know. Ah, yeah. Ah, but Jesus and his love and epiphany for us, his compassion for us, he's a God, amen, on his journey to Jerusalem um, that says your life is so powerful to me that my journey is incomplete unless I have you, amen, in, amen, my fold. Ah, uh, yes, and, and that should be reason for some of us to shout. That should be reason for many of us to go crazy right now because there have been a number of times we've been that one. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that would leave a church in the wilderness to go out and follow me. Ooh, that's a bad God right there. Oh, that's a God that's worthy to be praised. He would rather leave his church in the wilderness than to let you and I have to struggle in sin. Oh, he would rather leave us in the care of someone else than to let us not be in the fold. Ah, uh, yes, he, he tells us another story of a lost coin. Ah, uh, yes, he tells us that there's a woman who has ten pieces of silver. Ah, uh, she loses one piece, and the Bible says she tears up everything. She lights a candle, she sweeps under the house. Ah, uh, yes, she seeks diligently until she finds it. Jesus is sharing these, amen, parable with us, amen, to let us know that his diligence for us, his covenant with us, his compassion for us will not allow him to leave any stone unturned. Ah, yes, until he finds what he's after. Um, the Bible says something interesting. The Bible says she seeks diligently with it. And when she has found it, the Bible says she calls her friends and her neighbors and she says, rejoice with me. Be happy with me. <laughs> because that which I was looking for I found <laughs> I find it interesting I can't teach it all today <laughs> uh, that in the middle of this lesson <laughs> Jesus says <laughs> ah, yes that not only <laughs> is this woman diligent and persistent in finding what she's lost <laughs> but she's also diligent and persistent <laughs> in getting other people to celebrate <laughs> recovery <laughs> Ah, yes, and I think the problem with some of us in the church is we don't force the issue enough. We let people sit there while we praise God because we found our help, because we found our joy, because we found our healing. And we let people sit there and not celebrate with us. The Bible says this woman is so persistent. Not only does she find what she's missing, she goes out of her way to say, you're going to help me praise God for what I found. Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't bored. Say, neighbor, the buffet can wait. I need you to praise God that I walked up in this service and found my mind. Walked up in this service and found some strength. Found some peace. Found some healing and some hope. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, for the next 15 seconds, your praise is not optional. Look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, you're going to bless God with me, whether you want to or not. You're going to blink. You're going to clap your hands. You're going to wave. You're going to jump. You're going to do something. <laughs> oh, 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 she says, you're going to prioritize praise with me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, somebody found grace today. I'll turn around and tell somebody else. Somebody walked into a miracle today. Somebody found the healing. Ah, yes, that they've been desperately pursuing God for. And I think we owe him praise. I think we all ought to just jump up and holler as loud as we can. I think we all ought to go crazy for a quick second. Open up your mouth and give the Lord praise. 
on that device. Open up your mouth. You behind that computer screen. Open up your mouth and praise God for what somebody else found. Sit down for a quick second. I promise I'm getting out of here. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. I hope I, I can get through baggage clean real quick. Ah, and security. Ah, but nevertheless, the Bible says something interesting happens. Ah, um, the Bible says, ah, yes, when it comes to the lost sheep, ah, the Bible says on both of these occasions, ah, the shepherd, when he finds what he's after, ah, ah, yes, he summons people to fellowship with him. Ah, ooh, Hoshama. Go back and reread the story of the lost sheep. When the shepherd finds the missing sheep, he tells his friends, praise God with me. Ah, yes, when this woman finds the coin, she says, praise God with me. But here we have the story of a lost son that doesn't appear to be lost. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor Shorter? Stop the madness. Uh, uh, yeah. It appears this son, uh, who is of age and sound mind, uh, made a grown man's decision. Uh, he decides that living in his father's house uh, is no longer suitable uh, for his goal and vision in life. Uh, he makes a decision. To get up. Uh, he makes a decision uh, to ask his father for his inheritance. Uh, he makes a decision. Nobody uh, uh, walks up to him and says, You gotta do this. Uh, uh, nobody walks up to this amen young man and say, uh, uh, You 18, you grown, you best get up out of here. Uh, I got something saved for you up under Big Mama's mattress. Uh, go out and make your own way. Uh, no, he in his own right mind uh, uh, yes he of his own recognizance uh, decides I've had enough of daddy's house uh, uh, he says I want what you owe me uh, ooh, look at how bold he got uh, uh, yeah. uh, I want my inheritance uh, uh, yes that I can do for myself uh, without argument. We don't see amen the father say are you sure you want to do this? Without debate, without controversy. Ah, yes he splits the affairs with his other son and gives his son this portion. He's a grown man. I said to myself Lord how is he a lost son? When he made a decision this is where I'm going. How is he a lost son? When he decided upon his own accord, ah, ah, yes, that living in the grace of his father ah, wasn't good enough anymore. Ah, how was he lost ah, when this is a decision that he makes? Ah, um, the Bible says, you know it, I'm fast forwarding. Ah, ah, yes, he let that little money get to his head, ah, ah, took up residency, ah, ah, lost everything. Ah, ah, Finds himself living among the swine. Uh, uh, yes, says to himself, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, things had gotten so bad. Uh, uh, he's laying up with the pigs. Uh, uh, eating what the pigs eat. Uh, uh, anybody ever been there before? Uh, uh, when things have gotten so bad. Uh, uh, you said, now, wow. I know, I'm, I know I'm low, but this is even a new low for me. Anybody be honest enough to say, yeah, I didn't done some stuff before, but this right here, this ain't even me. He has an epiphany and he says, I must go back to my father. Maybe my father will be merciful enough to me that he'll let me clean. Maybe I can be like Jeffrey. Ah, yes, from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Sweep up and cook. Be a hired servant. Ah, yes, but nevertheless, he makes his way back home. I'm fast forwarding and I promise you I'll make it up another time. He makes his way back home. His father never goes out looking for him. I said to myself, in the other two stories, the shepherd leaves the fold to go find the sheep. The woman looks up and down to find it. Father didn't do nothing. Yes, but when he sees his son on the horizon of a return, the Bible says he meets his son. Uh, 
Ah, yes, and restores his son. Ah, yes, and decides ah, that whatever his son has done, there's a capacity in my heart that says he's worthy of restoration. Ah, yes, whatever he did, it don't matter. Whatever he's done, whatever he's been lying or hanging with, ah, yes, it don't even matter. He says, I want you to get a robe. I want you to get a ring. Ah, yes, I want you to get him some new shoes. Ah, yes, I want to restore his identity. And above all, I want to have a party. Oh, shema. Ah, time is getting away. Ah, yes. Ah, Y'all pray for the family with the children in front of me in the line, all right? Ah, yes, but nevertheless, ah, he says, I'm going to have a party. I'm going to have a fellowship. Hear me this move. Um, the Bible says, he says, I want you to go kill the fatted calf and let's have a celebration. While restoration is taking place, he has another brother. The other brother is away out in the field. So when he shows up here in barbecue, when he shows up smelling the scent, when he shows up, amen, seeing the festivities going on, when he shows up hearing the music, when he shows up hearing the festivities, he's scratching his head saying, what's going on? Ah, uh, yes, he is surprised. Uh, somebody just shout surprise. Uh, surprise. Uh, what are we having a party for? Uh, who is the expected guest? Ah, uh, yes, why is daddy uh, out here uh, making this spread? Ah, uh, yes, the servant tells the other brother, uh, surprise. Uh, your brother who we thought was dead. Uh, your brother who we thought. Uh, the world overcame uh, your brother who we thought uh, we never see again uh, is home uh, and your father has decided uh, to throw a party uh, so surprise uh, it's a surprise party uh, in the eyes of the other brother uh, but the madness starts uh, because he cannot rationalize uh, why his brother is worthy of a party why would you patronize and celebrate somebody who took your fortunes and put it in the hands of harlots? His brother says, I don't understand this. How are you going to throw a party for somebody? Ah, yes. Ah, yes, who didn't make a wise decision. It would appear as if we're condoning foolishness. Pops, I know you ain't that. I, what's going on here? You're throwing a party for somebody who disrespected you? You're throwing a party for somebody who thought you were good as dead because he asked for his inheritance ahead of you passing away? Had the arrogance to leave here knowing that you got a good thing here and you're going to throw him a party? Don't that sound like some of the saints? Uh, don't that sound like some of the saints? Uh, oh, you gonna let her get up and lead the song? Uh, you know where she was last week. Uh, you gonna let him be a deacon? Uh, let's go after the system. Uh, you gonna let you gonna give grace? Uh, you gonna look past uh, all these years she been hitting and missing? Uh, what are we doing here, uh, Pastor? You must be blind, uh, Pastor. You just gonna let them wear what they wearing? Uh, you gonna just let them? I feel your eyes some preaching through it and preaching through the spirit of the other brother because the Bible says he was feeling some kind of way and he had every right to feel his kind of way but what he did not have the right to do was to tell his father how he should exercise grace and I don't know about you but I'm so glad that other people don't get to decide how God wants to issue favor how God wants to issue deliverance how God wants to restore and how God wants to bless 
I got to get out of here. But on my way to my seat, as I get out of here and try to catch this plane, he told me to tell the people to stop the madness. He says, sure to tell my people to make sense of the text. The Bible says that when he finds, when the father finds out that his son is feeling some kind of way, the Bible says something interesting. The father never went out to look for the son who was laying with the pigs. But when he has this party, he goes after the son that's in the house. Read the text. He never made a move to go after the son that was living in the pig pen. But when the older the other brother had a problem with restoration, the Bible says the father gets out of the party and goes looking for his other lost son. Can I tell you, if you've got a hard heart, you can be lost in the church. If you're unforgiving, you can be lost in the church. If you don't have a heart to receive the lamb's back into the fold, you can be lost in the church. I don't know what's worse. Minister Nikita, I don't know what's worse. The son out in the pig field or the son in the house with a hard heart. I don't know what's worse, elder boy. Somebody out living it up in sin or somebody in the church not with a grapple on love. Somebody in the church with a lack of apathy. Somebody in the church with a lack of forgiveness. Somebody in the church that's being loved by and being loved on. A good father that won't demonstrate grace to somebody else. I got to get out of here. But the other brother says to his father, I've never left your side. I've never transgressed. I've never broken a commandment. I've stayed here on the good days. I've been here when it was just 20 people here. I've never left the church and I've never left your side. But here it is. Your son who does foolishness. And now you want to throw him apart. I thought to myself, Lord, what are you trying to tell us? He says, tell my people to stop the madness within the house. To stop the madness. The imbalance on the inside of the church that won't let us operate with love. That won't let us grant second chances. For those of us who want to hoard God's favor. For those of us who want to hoard God's forgiveness but never have the capacity to remember when we were without and the founder says to his son he says that boy was lost and now found I said but he made a decision but the Lord says even his decision making can render him lost the decision to leave the house can make you lost and the decision not to forgive can make you lost the decision to live in the world makes you just as lost as being in the church with a hard heart he says speak to that spirit today he says speak and tell my people I'm having a survival party I'm having a survival celebration what could have consumed him what could have killed him what could have left him for dead he found grace in me he found enough love not in my judgment but he found love in my heart he says with loving kindness have I drawn them he says what you missing of the brother is that if he would have for one moment 
that has been stunning your reaction he would have stayed where he was and he would have thought for one moment that I would have been like you of the brother he would have stayed there another season and would have probably died where he is he says but I'm celebrating something special today I'm celebrating the fact that both of you are here and as I close this message and you lean on your neighbor and say neighbor we both are here we're both here and that's reason to celebrate that's reason to praise God as I close this message turn around and tell somebody we're both here some of us by way of the world some of us lost in the house but nevertheless we're both alive we're both in grace we're both in the sanctuary and that's reason enough for us to glorify him it might not be your testimony that you're recovering from a 30-year addiction it might not be your testimony that you're overcoming something larger than yourself that you left the church but the fact that you remain is reason to throw a party the fact that you're still in the church is reason to throw a party the way that we are sometimes in the body of Christ we don't like to celebrate staying but look at your neighbor and say neighbor I celebrate you staying in the church when you had a reason to walk away I celebrate you holding on to your virginity when you had a reason to give it up I feel like having church all by myself I celebrate you on your dark days not giving up and going to the world who am I preaching to I feel like going crazy all by myself look at your neighbor and say neighbor I celebrate you I celebrate the fact that the enemy tried to pull you away but you're still in here lifting your hand still in here giving God glory stop the madness I celebrate you holding on I celebrate you being faithful Celebrate you still giving it all you got. Somebody open up your mouth and give God a praise because we're both still here. Say, neighbor, let's party. Say, neighbor, let's party. You came to a surprise party. You didn't expect me to get up, and I didn't expect you to still be here. But since we're both here, let's both of us raise our hand. Let's both of us lift our voice. Let's both of us shout the victory. The fatted calf is on the table. There's a blessing here for you and me. Let's both dance. Let's both shabak. Let's both tear. Let's both give him glory. Let's both dance. You survived the world and I survived church hurt. You survived the enemy and I survived the institution of church. Open up your mouth and praise Look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, I'm going to praise God right now because you didn't give up. I'm going to praise God right now. 
because you didn't throw in the towel. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to praise God for all that you've been through. It didn't get the worst of you. And you're here in heavenly places. Somebody open your mouth and praise him for life. Praise him for strength. Praise him for a second chance. Open your mouth and bless him. You would have died in COVID. You would have died already. But say, neighbor, we're both still here. Neighbor, we're both still here. We both still got our mind. We both still got our strength. And that's reason to dance. That's reason for music. That's reason for celebration. That's reason for your best hand clap. That's reason enough for your best holler. That's reason enough for your literal voice. Somebody praise him. Look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, surprise, I'm alive. Surprise, I still have my mind. Surprise, I still got joy. After all I've been through, out of all I've seen, out of all the enemies thrown at me, I still have joy. I'm still in the house. and open up your mouth and praise him. Okay, one more person tell them we're both still here. And that's a reason to celebrate. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you've been through, and you don't know what I've been through. But lift your head and say, neighbor, we're both still here. We're both in the house. And that's reason to dance. That's reason to praise. That's reason to have joy. That's reason to give him the best praise you can. I need a praiser in here right now. Lift up your voice and shout, I'm still here. Get 
Give him, I'm still here, praise. I'm still here. I'm still here. I took the devil's best shot, but I'm so glad to be back in the house. I'm so glad to be back at the table. I'm so glad he's a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. You all gotta dance. 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 You all gotta dance.
at somebody and say, neighbor, I wouldn't expect you to understand this praise unless you were dead and now you're alive. I wouldn't expect you to get this dance unless you were almost there and God brought you back. I wouldn't expect you to appreciate this hand clap unless you knew like I knew where I was and how he picked me up and turned me around. I need somebody to help me bless him. your hands in the sanctuary. Thank you, God, for not giving up on me. And even when I lost my way in the house, thank you for coming after me. Thank you for being so gracious to me to allow me to get back into the house. But even with my contrary self in the house, thank you for giving me soberness to love again, to forgive again, not to be critical or judgmental, God. Thanking you for bringing me back to the house and thank you for saving me again in the house. Father, we just appreciate you. Our hands are lifted because we just appreciate you. We just thank you. We just thank you. We just thank you. In the midst of the madness of being out of your will, you loved us. And in the madness of self, oh God, you brought self-examination to let us know we can enjoy the feast as well. Father, I pray this word would make us better. I pray this word, oh God, would help us stop the madness. Help us to be forgiving and giving. Help us, oh God, not, oh God, to lack empathy, oh God. Help us, oh God, to always have a seat ready to serve those who want to come back into the knowledge of you. Don't let my way of thinking, oh God, be a hindrance to someone that thinks that grace has left the house. Forgive me, God. Save me, God. Save me from my critical eye. Save me from my critical tongue. Save me from my isms and schisms in my upbringing, in my tradition that makes people feel like there's not a safe haven in the house. Save the pastor again. Shabbat, that they don't see holiness as an indictment, but holiness as beauty unto you, oh God. Oh God, as you're speaking to the house, oh God, we rejoice that your hand of mercy is not slack, that your compassion toward us, oh God, is not far. I pray, oh God, today that this word would challenge your people every facet of their relationship I pray oh God it would charge us oh God to be better to be more accommodating to remember where you brought us from oh God to remember oh God without you we would be nothing oh God as you journey to the cross oh God we thank you for this detour to remind us that we have a greater capacity of love that you want to extract from us oh God there's a greater capacity, oh God, to forgive others that you want to pull out of us. Let the madness stop. Father, don't let me feel like I'm losing in the house. 
because I'm giving grace to someone else. Don't let me ever feel unappreciated for hanging in here with you, oh God. Deliver me from the complex. Deliver me from that complex, oh Shabba, that says being in the house ain't worth it. The devil is a liar, God. Strengthen your people this day, oh God, to realize that you're happy we're both here. That you in heaven rejoice for us both being in the house. Today we thank you. Today we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. What I love most about the text is that the text ends without there being any indication what the other brother does with this indictment. I thought it was interesting that Luke would leave a cliffhanger. And the Lord said it's because we get to choose how we operate as the other brother. We can be hard or we can be accommodating. I thank God that he leaves this room, that when he gives us this information, we get to write the rest of the story. I love that God tells you how it is and gives you the choice on how the chapter is supposed to end. <laughs> You're here today. You need water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Come now. You can be saved today. Receive Jesus in the pardon of your sin. Marvel not. You hear him tugging at your heart. You hear him calling you into relationship. Marvel not. You must be born again of water and of the spirit. You are home that are watching. Choose salvation today. You can be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're in the house today and you want to receive it, come. Come boy, young man, man, woman, young woman. Salvation can be yours today. Come without money, come without price. God says, I'm here to save you. I've waited so that you can enjoy the best of me. Hallelujah. If you desire prayer, you want prayer, come real quickly. Come real quickly. If you don't want to come, you can stand where you are. We'll come to you. Amen. If you want prayer, just stand. Stand right at your seat. Amen. And we'll pray corporately. Real quickly, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for this word. We pray for healing and strength. We pray for wholeness. We pray, O oh God, for resolution, O oh God. O oh God, for every hand that's lifted, O oh God, you know the need. You know, O oh God, what they stand in need of before they even ask, O oh God. Sweeping mercy right now, sweeping grace, sweeping favor, O oh God, sweeping compassion, O oh God. Let your love overwhelm them this day. Strengthen them, oh God. Strengthen them in the spirit, man, physically, oh God. Strengthen them on the job and their workplace, oh God. Let their light continue to shine, oh God. When they need another spark, give them another spark. These things we ask in Jesus' name. For there is power in your name. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God one more hand. Praise. We have anybody that wants to be a member. Anybody that wants to receive the right hand of fellowship says, I want to make Bethesda Temple Church my church home. You don't have to look any further. We that church, y'all. <laughs> we that church. Amen. If you're here, amen. We'd love to have you. Amen. If not, we're standing. Amen. We're standing to be dismissed. Our online community, we thank God for you. Thank you for joining in and tuning us into this broadcast. We thank God for letting God just have us. So we're going to shake your hands like this today. We love you. Amen. The hugs are coming back, y'all. I promise. <laughs> They're coming back up top. God bless you all. God bless y'all. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Father, in the name of Jesus, even this day, oh God, as we are dismissed, I pray this word would send us with marching orders to do better, stop the madness, to appreciate being in the house, and to extend grace, oh God, to those who want a new relationship with you. 
I pray, oh God, we would never forget, oh God, from whence you've brought us from. Lead us safely over the dangerous highways and byways, oh God. Protect our homes as we're away, oh God. Strengthen, oh God, even your manservant this day, oh God. Restore virtue and give peace and clarity to all those that are here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We love you. God bless you. May the grace of God go with you. In Jesus' name. Thank you.